Unit 2, Lesson 2, Representing Ratios with Diagrams. Number 1. Here is a diagram that describes the cups of green and white paint in a mixture. Green paint cups. There's four of them. White paint cups. There's two of them. Select all the statements that accurately describe this diagram. A. The ratio of cups of white paint to cups of green paint that is correct. B. For every cup of green paint, there are two cups of white paint. It's actually the other way around. It should be for every two cups of green paint, there's one cup of white paint. C. The ratio of cups of green paint to cups of white paint is four to two. So there's four cups of green paint, two cups of white paint. So that is true. D. For every cup of white paint, there are two cups of green paint. So for every cup of white paint, there are two cups of green paint. That is true. And E. The ratio of cups of green paint to cups of white paint is 2 to 4. That is not true because they mention the green paint first. And in the ratio, the first number says 2. But there's actually four cups of green paint. The first number right here would have had to have been a four. In order to make it true, they should say four to two. That would have been true, but they didn't. Number two, to make a snack mix, combine two cups of raisins with four cups of pretzels and six cups of almonds. A, create a diagram to represent the quantities of each ingredient in this recipe two cups of raisins. So let's represent raisins with the letter R and we'll have two R's to represent two cups. Four cups of pretzels. So let's put four P's to represent four cups of pretzels. And then finally six cups of almonds. Six A's to represent the almonds. Number two B. Use your diagram to complete each sentence. The ratio of raisins to pretzels to almonds is 2 to 4 to 6. There are blank cups of pretzels for every cup of raisins. So this is singular, one cup. So for every one cup of raisins, so if we were to take one cup of raisins, that would be half the cups of raisins, we'd have to take half the cup of pretzels. Two cups of pretzels for every one cup of raisin. There are blank cups of almonds for every cup of raisins. So again, this is singular for every cup of raisins. So if we took one cup of raisin, that's half the cups. So let's take half the cups of almonds. That would be three. There are three cups of almonds for every cup of raisins. Number three, A. A square is three inches by three inches. What is the area? We know that the formula for area is base times height. So if a square is three inches by three inches, if their side lengths are three, it would be three inches times three inches and that would equal nine inches squared or nine square inches. So the area would be nine square inches. 3B, a square has a side length of five feet. What is the area? So again, if the lengths are five, it's gonna be five times five and the area is going to be 25, and this time it's not inches, it's feet squared. 25 feet squared. C, the area of a square is 36 square centimeters. What is the length of each side of the square? So I just drew a box that's two by two, and it has one, two, three, four on the inside. So the area is four when the side lengths are two. Let's try it again with four. So this side length is four for the square. So it's four by four. The base is four, the height is four. 
4 times 4 is 16. So 4 times 4 equals 16. Let's count them. 1, 2, 3, 14, 15, 16. So we're not looking for 16 in here. We're trying to get 36. So I just made a square with side lengths of 6. So 6 times 6 equals 36. So if we were to count these, we'd have 1, 2, 3, 1, 3, 2, 33, 34, 35, 36. The area of a square is 36 square centimeters. What is the length of each side of the square? The length of each side of the square is 6. Number 4. Find the area of this quadrilateral. Explain or show your strategy. As the shape is right now, it's a little bit difficult, but if I were to turn this into two triangles, it would be much easier because I know the formula for finding the area of two triangles. One way that I could do it is I could divide it right down the middle here. And now I have this triangle and I have a second triangle right underneath it. So for this top triangle, the pink triangle, let's get its dimensions. Let's get its height and its width. One, one two, three. So the height equals three units. And its base stretches from here. One, two, three, four, five, six. So the base is six. The height is three and the base is six. And if you remember the formula, formula for a triangle, the area of a triangle is half of the base times the height. So that should be pretty simple. Let's do base times height. Six times three. Six times three is going to equal 18. And then now we need to cut that in half, right? So let's cut that in half. Half of 18 equals nine. So it's not just nine, it's nine units because they didn't identify what they were they didn't say feet or inches so we're going to say nine units and these are squares which are two-dimensional nine unit squares let's find the bottom one you know we can use our imagination and say that this is the base right here and then we can count one two three four five for the height so the bottom triangle, the height is five, and the base is one, two, three, four, five, six. Base is six. So five times six equals 30. And then remember, it's a triangle, so we have to cut it in half. So half of 30 is 15 units and remember we're talking about squares the area of this whole shape this original shape that looked like a kite we have to add this top one which was 9 to the bottom one which was 15 so what is 9 plus 15 24 the area of this triangle is 24 units squared. Number five, complete each equation with a number that makes it true. A, one eighth times eight. A few ways to do this. One eighth multiplied by eight. And I have to put it over 1, so it's also a fraction. So we're going to go 1 times 8 equals 8. 
8 times 1, you're just multiplying straight across, equals 8. So 8 over 8, that really means 8 divided by 8. So 8 divided by 8 is 1. 1. So B, 3 eighths times 8. Well, that answer is just going to be 3 times bigger than the first one that we just did. If 1 eighth times 8 is 1, then 3 eighths times 8 would be 3. 3 eighths times 8. 3 times 8 is 24. 8 times 1 is 8. And remember, 24 over 8, or 24 eighths, equals... It's the same thing as 24 divided by 8. What is 24 divided by 8? 3. So we can put 3 up here. So now we're doing 1 eighth times 7. 1 8 times 7. So now we get 1 times 7 is 7. 8 times 1 is 8. So now we got our answer would be 7 eighths. 7 eighths. 3 eighths times 7. So my guess is that it's going to be 3 times bigger than the first one because 3 eighths is 3 times bigger than 1 eighth. So 7 eighths times 3 is going to be 21 eighths. So my guess is that we're going to get 21 eighths. Let's test this out. 3 eighths times 7. 3 times 7 is 21. 8 times 1 is 8. So here we have an improper fraction, meaning that the numerator is larger than the denominator, or the top number is bigger than the bottom number. Again, it's like a division problem. We could simplify this and reduce it. 21 divided by 8. How many times does 8 go into 21? 8 times 3 is 24, so that's too many times. How about twice? 8 times 2 is 16, so 8 times 2 is 16. And then what's the remainder? 21 minus 16 is 5 eighths. 2 and 5 eighths. So either one of these answers could work, but I'll use this mixed number answer right here. Before we go, I want to show you what I was thinking of with the 1 eighth of 8 from A. Working on A right now. I'm going to divide this up into 8 pieces. So we have eight pieces. This number down here tells you how many pieces you're gonna divide it up into. So we've divided it up into eight different pieces. So each of these are worth one. One eighth times eight is the same thing as of eight. One eighth of eight. It's asking what is one eighth of eight? Each one of these is considered a fraction of the whole, right? And that fraction is 1 8. So let's take that 1 8, the value inside there is 1. So we know that the answer is 1. When it said 3 eighths of 8, well, you take this 1 8, 2 8, 3 eighths. So 3 eighths of 8 is three.